Okay. Recording in progress. Here's, we got interrupted. We're going to have a part two of this conversation, which I'm finding fascinating. Here we are again with Veronica Cardoso and Thea Mason and me. Um, so Veronica, we were talking about, we were talking, why don't you, why don't you phrase what, what, what you're seeing as the, the issue, first of all, and how we, how we address it and where we go from here. Yeah, we were, we were uh, there in the shell, in this hardened shell. Um, um, we're observing that um, society is operating out of this shell, out of this hardened dead concepts of right and wrong, um, of real and unreal, of you versus me. Um, and this lack of curiosity, this lack of interest, um, because- in, we, in, in the other, this lack of interest and curiosity in the other, right? Because if, if um, you know, the, and, and this hardening, this, this lack of curiosity, I have found that um, there's been somehow in this hardening of ideas, um, um, the, um, the lack of fostering of an inner landscape, of um, a spiritual architecture that allows us to, even if the world's moving fast and we're getting all this attacks or all this information, we have that space to slow down within us and take take it back and take a look at things as they're happening and not be such in a flesh and ready to go out right it's like those little children that you can observe in the playground that are running with their chest fast forward and their their feet are almost left behind right we want we want to go in there in the middle no um and there's there's a there's a big angst these days to be with oneself um and so there's there's an interesting phenomena where i find myself when i come up against you it's a rubbing uh, as you said, uh, uh, um, uh, a freeze, how did you say it, of this teenage, of this generation that the stayed arrested in the arrested development. Arrested development, yeah. Arrested development, because as you, when you play games with the middle schoolers, one of the most important games it's is wrestling. to wrestle, right. come against each other. And that's a very human, but we need to grow out of it. Right. So, so right fascinating so this this susceptibility to this ident and tendency toward identity politics mm -hmm. uh, ide political identity racial identity sexual orientation identity uh which is just you know one one facet of, of anyone right it's, it's so, it's like, why would we identify ourselves by just that one thing, right? When we're so much more, right? But so it's that, it's, it's so, so then the need to make the other wrong and go, and not just, not just even make them wrong, maybe not even quietly and internally being like, mm, but like being way out here and having to cancel them out, that is, in essence, wrestling with them yeah. so that we can discover who we are. Yeah. And, and, and it's not wrestling with them with the centered quietness of objectivity. Right. It's a flailing, like mm -hmm. you're drowning in the sea and you're looking for purchase. Yeah. Uh, you're looking for your lifeline rather than, oh, I can float actually and I'm right where I am. Right. Well, we're because kind of like like I, I like this visual that you're giving, Veronica, which is, you know, rather than where the goal is to be 
inner centered instead we're out here mm -hmm. and when we're going up against someone else we're almost merging with their edge too right we're like we don't know where we began or end and we're kind of trying to maybe even uh, draw something from their edge to you know to to strengthen our edge or you know i, I don't, i'm not being articulate well and then and then i mean and you don't mean to cut you off all so many good things <laughs> um but also when we're living in a a world where a lot of people don't know where they are i mean and i'm on this journey and been working with this for a long time you have people coming in to your center without knowing it yeah uh you are going into people's center without knowing it and yeah. then you have a huge explosion and backlash when you realize you've been invaded mm -hmm. or right. you've invaded someone because nobody is knowing how you meet them at your gate. Right. With choice. And then we're talking about the friction, like the, the finding in that way. Um, because yes, in the center, but you need to know how to be out here. So you should be able to be here. We want to be able to be here as adults and here. So mm -hmm. we know where the pathway is. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Um, and then to maybe transition a little bit to what our original topic was going to be. Um, so, you know, certainly, you know, in, in very simply, in, in simplistic terms, it's a lot easier to find one's center in the quiet of nature there right it, you know out of the madness and frenzy certainly of the urban life uh the scheduled life the american uh dream yeah right totally exactly uh. <laughs> and um and so we were sharing before this again each one of us have now been you know we 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 all to one degree or another fled California's crazy, certainly surrounding, you know, and, 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 and even more so <laughs> when all this last year hit. Um, and we each saw it different places for different reasons. And um, what I was observing to Thea a few days ago and then with you guys a little bit was that it took a year so i i spent the last year in very remote uh idaho near the montana border uh we had actually planned to leave the country and uh, listed our house two days before newsom's for shelter in place and all of our plans changed <laughs> but we had planned to leave the country because we thought in that bubble a marin you know, of San Francisco Bay Area, uh, it was hard to conceive that it could be that different anywhere else in the country. Um, I'm fortunate to have discovered by all these turn of events that there, there are some really cool places in much of the rest of the country outside California. Um, but, you know, I'm still processing the change that I've gone through having been out of there. And one of the observations that I'd made and had was that I didn't know I was living with a kind of low level anxiety all the time mm -hmm. back there in all of my interactions with everyone in the world and in my community that I couldn't exactly trust people to be responsible for themselves and in possession of themselves. Mm -hmm. So that I didn't really trust wholly what they were saying to me, not because I thought they were lying, but because I didn't think they were even fully aware of what they were saying to me, what they were committing to, what they promised to do, whatever it was, right? Minor or major things. Um, 
living where I was living this last year, where people, I mean, Veronica, you were talking about this, right? Like the difference between people who live where their survival depends on their word, right? Their honor, their relationships, their true relationships with their neighbors, their reliability, what? The real network. The reliability to their neighbors and on their neighbors, all of that, right? And, um, and to their surroundings. And, and absolutely, to the earth. You know, their, their true investment in the land, in their trees, in how well they maintain the, the shrubbery around the house, you know, whatever, right? Um, uh, you know, the, 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 the snow, the snow and, and everything, right? So, so when people are, yeah, I mean, it's like I woke up just a few weeks ago realizing this like oh my gosh i got accustomed to not second guessing people too much really taking them at their word which shouldn't be so remarkable but it was living there in that area of california that that we lived well and also par part of that is you know the other word I wanted to say, it's like the, the suing culture, like, yeah. like, you know, they have signs at playgrounds that say no running because they don't yeah, want to the, 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 litig the litigious culture. Yes. Yes. That's what I want to say. So that's, that's, that's in that, that last. Right. Be well, because when you have money, right, that, that goes hand in hand with moneyed areas, yeah. litigiousness, yeah. right. That's one thing for sure yeah. that that's, that's a go-to right? If somebody wrongs you, you sue them. Or if you simply perceive you were wronged, you sue them, yeah. right? Um, yeah. uh, not to mention uh, a, a culture, a state uh, that has every single protection in place for every person so that they really don't have to be responsible for themselves. That if, if they are if wow. they are wronged, here's this measure, this measure, this measure, this measure that they can uh, take to file their grievance, right? And, you know, obviously there are balances in, in protections of, of, of citizens. Um, but, but when you give them everything so that they don't have to even think twice about being responsible really for themselves, that doesn't set them up very well, right? That doesn't that doesn't uh, that doesn't help them develop a, a kind of core, mm -hmm. um, you know, of of integrity. Uh, I, I mean, you know, I, I like I'm a, I'm going all over the place, I guess, but I'm just thinking about how when I first was working there, I remember one employee. I don't even think they showed up. Like they just all of a sudden didn't show up for a certain time they were supposed to be there. And it was because they had a therapy appointment. And, you know, and I'm getting on them for not having shown up and they don't even realize that they uh, were irresponsible, but especially because it was a therapy appointment, it's ex that's ex supposed to be excused. You know, so there's just a, well, you know, I, again, go ahead. Well, I think as you as we travel with that, bringing it a little bit back to this picture of the inner landscape, that's that's where that core exactly lies. And so, if there's not um, the incentive, in a way, in your world out here, to know where that center is or that core is, and then the shell is hard. How do you even get there? How do you even find, or what's the point? You know, how do we, how do we get drawn into finding that core center to be self-responsible and to have the ability to be objective and have engagement with another that's true and good? So. Nini Collins mm -mm. said it's an emergency. Hold, hold on one sec. <laughs> let me, let me pause. Um, 
I can't, I'm in the middle of something. All right. Okay, we're back. Um, so wherever we, we are, we were exactly, um, can, can you go back, Veronica, to, to what your thoughts and theory uh, is about World War I, the, the beginning of the cancellation of the heterosexual male uh, as archetype, at least? Um, well, they were, I'm, I'm just going to start with, there's a great book called The, the Boy Crisis, and, um, and he speaks, they both speak, two writers, but I'm going to connect it to, to something that happened uh, back then with the book, because men, because of war, they're out of the home they're right. out of the father they're pushed out of the of a leading holding and it's not that the women don't hold and don't lead but there's two very different energies no the mom is a a, a, a introducing and drawing us into the world, right? The mom can, can bring in a storm and clear out the waters. The dad no, can as well, um, or the father can as well uh, bring down the storm, but the father energy brings it differently. The father energy gives temper like a on and off switch and i remember my father as with this word that it's enough and my mother and i would be in this dance but yes but no but you said but i said but it's the social the mother gives us a lot of our social right but my father would be annoyed of us bickering at each other at the dinner table and he would just say the word enough and that was enough right. for both of us. It was a, as you say, right? It's this, it was the entering of the pole. Yeah. Zip it. And it wasn't like, shut up, you can't say it. Sure. Sure. It, you're not going anywhere. So it's enough. Yeah. And 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 take a hold of yourself again. No. And um there's so many different things that we learn from the father and we learn from the mother. Yes. Well, it's all, it's why men are great leaders of organizations, right? And, and, and in, you know, in my opinion, more suited to, to that uh, top Four. dog position, right? Not that women aren't leaders in their own way, but men uh, are, are more uh, naturally in their element in, in that capacity of just laying down the line, right? Great. Um, so, so circular. And it agree, agreed, um, though I would say, so a little bit, my question is just, I'm curious why World War I in particular. Thea had said when we were off camera, something about the mechanization versus, because oh. war has been going on for, for you know, quite, you know, oh. time and memorial as far as we understand. Yeah. So. Why World War One? I? I don't know, and I'm just going to throw out in that the mechanization changed the the quality of of fighting. Frankly, I mean, one, it was more atrocious, and there were so many deaths, and the the enormity of it. Two, uh, the lack there there is more distance now between you and who your foe. Uh huh. Right. There's a lack of personalization and there's a lack of having to show up and be uh, the hunter in a way. It's a different, I don't know. I'm just throwing ideas out because I don't know. Well, I'd say, oh, go ahead. This question right now, right? Like where did the cancellation begin? And, and, and um, maybe, maybe someone will, will comment and say, you guys are, completely out of it it was in 1590 <laughs> i don't know i, I mean I, I i just it occurs to me i mean it's the industrialization that's yeah. really what you know in, in the same way that uh you know the amish 
I never really understood. I don't know much about the Amish, but I remember learning not long ago that the reason they don't drive automobiles is in order to ensure that the husband and father can't work far from the home. So, you know, when we were an agrarian society, you know, and we were there on our farms, our ranches, our land, the father was there. But with industrialization, that takes the father outside the home to go to work, mm -hmm. which also is interesting too, leads me to, to, to speculate that this whole, you know, and I don't even like to call it COVID nonsense because COVID didn't cause all of this lockdown and everything people did, the governments and, and all that. But so all of those lockdowns uh, caused many men to be working from home, back at home with their families all the time. So I wonder what's gonna result from that too, yeah. huh? Maybe something good, you know, maybe a lot of good stuff can come out of that, that mess. Absolutely. So, yeah. Um, so, you know, not to mention though, I thought maybe you were also saying just on the, the, the scale of the war, the first world war, which resulted in untold, you know, deaths. Um, well, not, not untold, but just so many more deaths of men, fatherless children, fatherless families, right? For that entire generation. And then so, where the woman was placed and, and that is the single mom, that is a, yeah. and it's not that I financially have had to be a single mom. I've, I've had the support, financial support of, of the fathers, yet I've lived in the home by myself with my children. And that every day and that every day holding and that every day routine and the every day conversation and that all the habits and everything one has to produce by oneself. And not only the habits and the education and the forming and the this, but now I need to be mother. And now I need to be father. So there's a breaking in me as well. Yeah. There's a type of bipolarity that yeah. need to be uh, managing within myself to reproduce something artificially. So, right. I mean, just this word mechanization, mm -hmm. um, even in those inner systems, yeah. we have been mechanized to reproduce artificial things that for, for, for that in those archetypes, in those ancient, um, archetypes that we know by instinct that are so important when there's a lack of it we're still reproducing them in so mm -hmm. many ways so uh, we that we in the reproduction of the father system within my mother um it's a it's an appreciation a a saying yes to how important the, the, the two is. roles and the father and the father is yes. um yeah i mean so many things to talk uh um be um with the father and the man um but where does we as educators um can support now the new generation of boys that are coming um, as a canceled individual. And um, I'm gonna say the, the unpopular. <laughs> so one of my other worries in society right now is this young babies, even, no? The babies of, um, white heterosexual males that are coming into this world right now. And they are coming into a world of being canceled already. And um, I can hear the shouting already of many people listening to me, what privilege, ah, ah, how dare you? 
And I'm going to respond to that screaming that I can hear <laughs> with this little story. I have a friend that um, randomly, because of genetics, she's a white woman. And the husband, randomly, by genetics, he's a white man. No? Beautiful people. Farmers, um, market marketers, beautiful people. And she lives in LA and she works at the Santa Monica market. So she's in, in it. And they just had a baby. By genetics. A <laughs> white, white baby. <laughs> baby. White boy baby. And he's 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 super cute. And one of the comments that she was sharing with me that she receives constantly is oh another one of those oh oh my god one of those a uh, white hetero males you had one of those so and this is people that love her and this is people that see her in the market and this is people that they think because they're in a good movement, that is something appropriate to say, or even funny, no? Oh, right. Um, right, right. So it is, it, it is a real thing for me to, uh -huh. um, and I'm not popular at any table when I talk about this. Um, you, you're just in the wrong state, wrong but yeah. State. <laughs> Wrong tables. Wrong tables. Let's turn those tables. <laughs> like, some, some tables I'm very popular, but most tables. <laughs> many tables. Many tables. I I I, I rub the wrong corners. Um, so what are we as teachers, as mothers, as fathers, as society? What are we? What are we doing to prepare? Um, men to be men and men to be healthy men and um and to in a way um save masculinity because it's under attack right and 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 therefore save our world right <laughs> well and i want to say what i had set off camera with you and briefly is that that picture of uh, canceling the hetero male with industrialization, it, you know, yeah. to a certain degree, um, has allowed us to be in this place of lack of self responsibility, um, of of it's out here rather than enough. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Just in terms of uh, one of the ingredients lacking, and and when you know, I don't think we need to clarify. We're not talking about being a toxic male really that's a wounded male <laughs> yeah but um but you know to be masculine to be able to step into and to draw upon the archetype of masculinity so that so that females that feel fem want to feel feminine can <laughs> yeah. yeah also you know because we want to we want to Absolutely. Yeah. E e even those of us who have, like Veronica was saying, I mean, we've been, we were raised to be, uh, what? To be alphas. Yeah, right, right. And, and, you know, I'm 50 years old and I'm, I'm still working on recognizing how good it feels when my husband takes something over that I don't even have to think about. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, I, I, I'm a professional woman. I've, I've worked in the world successfully and have navigated all of the worldly administrative financial tasks in the world. Right. So I'm, I can be good at it. I don't particularly love doing it. And, and, you know, and it's nice to just relinquish certain things so that I can focus on other things that also uh, need attending, especially as a homeschooling mother um, and, and or just mother, right? So yeah, 
So, okay. So we, this has been long, right? We, and we totally went a different direction than we planned, but it's been great. So we're just talking about the weather. <laughs> You're just still hanging on to that one, huh? Um, <laughs> we'll see, we'll see how that- About the weather. <laughs> That in, in, in trying to just close with the other topic, but within the topic in, the, in itself, my strongest experience of being outside of LA is uh, outside of LA because my partner was in LA and I was in San Diego. So it was LA and San Diego for me. Okay. Uh, but outside of that um, jab, a, a constant jab, a constant oh are, are you mexican or are you native american <laughs> right. um, and um it, it's truly being in a place where um the weather is very real because it's not artificial it's not held by a city it's not held by liability it's not held by the dad, by Uncle Sam, sabes? Como it's, it's just us in a home with neighbors, with a micro community in a way, and, um, and all the, the survivals and all these things have to have a play. But I, as a mover, as a seeker, as a migrating being, the I don't know why I have that impulse. I've just had it. Um, the further I've gone from my hometown, um, the less I have to time to do biographical work with my neighbors. Yeah. And those come slowly, but because we can't talk about the drama of auntie Vanessa and, um, whatever um we end up talking about the weather and um how much it rained or how much it didn't rain or um what is the season in comparison to last year and what i've noticed is that through speaking about our perception of the weather we end up using it as an analogy of how we are feeling and talking about the weather, which is so funny in sophisticated cities, it's always used as like, oh, so superficial. We talk like about the weather. <laughs> My experience of talking about the weather has been so, such a connecting moment because we're connecting. Because it's not about your political stance or my political stance or this and that or whatever. It's like, you have ideas. Guess what? Me too. <laughs> and we can share one thing. The weather. <laughs> and and it's we, because we can, we can be curious about each other. Mm -hmm. But as well, we can be curious together. And these are two beautiful geometries, right? The yeah. line and the, the triangle, triangle. <laughs> where we're like, oh, how are you? Good. Right. How are you? Good. How are you? How are you? <laughs> and how are you both? <laughs> Is it? I I like <laughs> <laughs> and objectively speak about something that connect. And that is for yeah. me beyond we need to find connectiveness and things yeah. to practice it. Is yeah. it the weather? Is it the carpentry? Is it sports? Sports? Games. Whatever it is. Yeah. But we're so insisting, and I say the society is so insisting in finding the place of disconnect. Yeah. Yeah. Where the activity should be the contrary of of um what connects us yeah we strengthen what connects us oh you're a toxic male if that's the case me too <laughs> oh well i'm a toxic female i'm a toxic female i think i am even a toxic male as well <laughs> i identify <laughs> <laughs>
Definitely a toxic. Male. <laughs> Identify as a toxic male. <laughs> we fucking the macho asshole. <laughs> <laughs> totally totally got absolutely I, I i love that yeah we'll we'll consider using <laughs> you really you really went to bat for her on that one veronica we'll consider using that as the title um but but no i totally get that i love that and you know in the same way that yeah this this entire uh cancel culture identity politics culture yes also focuses on our differences rather than our similarities, right? And similarities doesn't mean we have to be the same, mm -mm. but more similar perspective, similar, yeah, I mean, our humanity, right? We're all human beings, right? And, and that's, that's what I had, uh, that's what I had observed too, that and maybe this is part of it, but when we're not perceiving through a lens of, of sexism, racism, whatever, ism, then we can simply be human beings. And when human beings are regarding each other as human beings and treating each other as human beings, the result is humanity, Yeah. right? All right. All right, well, till next time, this was so fun. I do wish I was up there with you. With you guys. Actually, I wish you guys were here. Wow. <laughs> so. Maybe we'll make that happen somehow. Absolutely. Yes, we will. Yes, yes. All right, yes. I'm gonna, all right, let's say goodbye to the audience. I'm gonna stop recording and thank you. And I have to figure out my controls here. And is this it? Yeah.